possession for Cresskill. There's Sorry R, guarded by Quan. Now they go to Rom, guarded by Aspenberg. Into Pagnazzi. Can't get it to go. McGraw in great position for the rebound. Foul. Pagnazzi's getting really frustrated. Out that foul right there, she put a short shot up over great defense by Amy Aspenberg. Couldn't get the rebound and wound up going over her back to try and get the ball. It's really got to be comforting for a player guarding a superstar to know that when you get beat, you're going to have players stepping in behind you. And you don't have to worry about getting beat off the dribble. There was a perfect case. Aspenberg came over. And really, Pagnazzi had no chance when she was going recklessly after that rebound. Picnic back in the game for Jackie Kohlmeyer. Boyle for Pelini, back, back door. door. Can't get it. Aspen Burr comes up with it. Back out to Boyle, and they're going to reset. McGraw on the wing, back to Boyle out front. Pelini runs through. They find her again. Blocked Good by block. Pagnazzi. Blocked, but out of bounds. Pagnazzi had, had the block, but stepped out of bounds. Couldn't hold on to the ball. Pagnazzi, a 5'8 guard, got back in time to block that shot by Teresa Pellini. Chastity Hainsworth and Crystal Robinson, number 54 and 40, respectively, back into the game for Amy Aspenberg and Kerry Klein. Nice long pass to Pellini, heavily guarded by Megan Quinn. Looks inside to Robinson. And draws a quick foul on Pagnazzi again. So that's two on Pagnazzi. And with Crestkill down by 12, this lead is ballooned up to 12. Their star player has two fouls, and we'll see what they do with her. Crystal Robinson, the freshman at the free throw line. She'll get two. These might just be the two biggest foul shots that she has seen so far in her young career at Wildwood. Having watched her shoot fouls all year, she's, she still shoots them like a freshman. It's a good thing for Coach Dave Triano. She doesn't rebound like a freshman, because that's why she's in there. She misses both of them, and Pagnazzi gets the rebound, and she's going to try and take it coast to coast, I have a feeling. Dishes it off to Picnic. Misses the layup, and Hainsworth with the rebound. Pagnazzi with the steal, and she draws the foul on McGraw. Pagnazzi faked like she was going back on defense, turned and picked the ball right off. Kind of suckered Crystal Robinson into that one. So Pagnazzi gets to the foul line, see if she can get things going from there. Kyle, both teams will be in the bonus for one-on-one -on -one situation from here on in the next three minutes and 42 seconds. Pagnazzi can't get it to go, and she looks a little frustrated. Yeah, frustration is definitely set in on the Cresco team. They're working hard. Nothing seems to be falling. Another missed shot. Missed two. Sorry, R with the rebound. It's blocked. Pagnazzi back in. Can't get and it McGraw. to go, and McGraw picks up her second. Fresco's gotten some good shots off, some good inside shots. Nothing seems to be falling. There seems to be a little in the basket on top of the swarming defense that Wildwood is possessing today. Amy Aspenberg to the, to the desk. She is going to check in. Magnazzi misses another free throw. She comes in for Robinson, so McGraw will still have the assignment of guarding Pagnazzi, even with the two personals. And Pagnazzi hits one of four in that sequence, cuts the lead to 11. Here comes Pellini, McGraw ahead of the field. Can't get it, second chance at it. And Hainsworth fighting for the ball also, two players on the same team, that has to be a walk, and they whistled it. Picnic now running the offense for Creskill. And Pelini is guarding her. McGraw still on Pagnazzi as she gives it up, and now Rom on the wing. Hainsworth guarding her. Good defense by Hainsworth. Picnic on the back door, cut, misses the layup. Sorry, R. The tie up again. Thought they were going to call the walk, but they've been calling that tie up quick all day, and I guess that's all you could ask for is, is consistency by the officials. Yeah. A couple steps, but they were overlooked. A close call. A good one because it goes back to Wildwood. Down to three minutes, 18 to 7. Wildwood leads by 11. Boyle brings the ball up, picks up her dribbles, in a little bit of trouble. Somebody has to help her. She finds Pellini over the shoulder shot. Beautiful backdoor cut. Teresa had two girls on her that time. Went backdoor, 
took a very hard shot and went in. Boyle from desperation, it seemed, throwing her the ball. She was very close to a five-second call there. They're resorting to handing the ball to Pagnazzi now. Find Sariar under the basket. And her second field goal for four points is Crest Kill answers. Boyle from 15 finds Pellini with the penetration, finds Aspenberg off her fingertips, and the steal by McGraw. by McGraw. And they're going to call the jump once again. Jackie Kane coming in the game now for Lindsey McGraw. Jackie Kane checks in. McGraw will check out and probably sit out the rest of this half with her two fouls. Coach trying to like to get to the locker room with her having only two. So now Wildwood gone nine deep. And Jackie Kane, one of nine juniors, I'm sorry, one of three juniors that uh, Coach Schmano has on his squad this year. There's Sariar outside where she doesn't like to be, guarded by Aspenberg. Down to Pagnazzi, Good back luck. to Sariar. She scores and she has six with the assist of Pagnazzi. Pagnazzi and Sariar working a little two-man game, if you would. A little give and go and we seem to pay off that time. 20 to 11, Wildwoods lead down to nine. Pelini on the wing, looking to Hainsworth in the middle. Right over Pagnazzi, can't get it. She gets a rebound. And it's apparent they're going to let Pagnazzi get away with something now with two fouls. All over Hainsworth there. She had two Hainsworth shots out of couldn't get it to go in. Jackie Kane now has the assignment of guarding Pagnazzi. Riding her in. Pagnazzi trying to back her way in. Finds Sariar again. And they're going to get Chastity Hainsworth for the personal. Cresco still working a two-man game between Pagnazzi and Sariar. Into the game, number 52, Kerry Klun, to replace Amy Aspenberg. In the last 123 in the first half. Pagnazzi back to the line. This time it's a one and one. She's only one for four from the free throw line so far. And she hits this one two in a row for Pagnazzi. She has six. Since the shots are starting to fall a little bit, Pagnazzi looking a little bit more comfortable out there. Not 100% comfortable. And another one for Pagnazzi. She hits two there. She has seven, and the lead is down to seven as Wildwood once had an 11-point lead. It's now down to seven, 20 to 13. This is a big trip for Wildwood to get a field goal. They haven't had one in a while. Boyle with the penetration out to Kane, into Hainsworth on Pagnazzi. Tied up on the ground, gets it to Klun. Great play. Klun hits the basket. Kerry Klun hit the basket. Just under a minute to go. 22-13, Wildwood. Pagnazzi on the wing, still guarded by Jackie Kane. Pagnazzi finds Rom. To Sariar from about six feet, misses it. Picnic with the second chance, and she is fouled. I believe they're going to get Kerry Klun with this one. Kerry Klun it is. That's her second, so Wildwood's starting to get in a little bit of foul trouble. Picnic to shoot. Two shots. First. Good. Teresa Picnic rattles that one home. She'll get a second. This is the second one. Jackie Kane comes up with the rebound. There's a foul on Carolyn Rom. I believe it's Carolyn Rom, and if it is, that'll be her third. Wildwood in the bonus. Jackie Kane will have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with 36 seconds to play in the first half. And Wildwood with an eight-point lead. It would be good for Wildwood to hit these free throws for Jackie Kane, stretch that lead back up to 10 at the half. One plus one. Can't get it to go. Hainsworth with her hand in there. It comes loose. Clunt on the ground for it. They're going to call a jump ball yet again. Back to Wildwood. Good play by Kerry Clunt, despite being whacked in there a couple times. By Sariar. Both girls hustling very well for the ball. And the possession goes back to Wildwood. 
Here's Roy McLarnon back in for this out of bounds play. Wildwood has worked several good out of bounds plays through the year, and we'll see what they come up with here with only 32 seconds to go. And there it is, Pellini. Plenty of time, they're gonna set up a play. Pellini guarded by Quinn, now over to Boyle, guarded by Picnic. Coach Trana wants Wildwood to hold for one shot with 20 seconds up to play. Gets to McLaurin and guarded by Pagnazzi with two fouls. Pellini, now they're gonna get into the play. Pellini guarded by Quinn, she's in trouble. 10 seconds. Gets it to McLaurin and there's Boyle in the wing, the penetration. Blocked by Sariar. And, and Wildwood will Wild ball. Four seconds to go, they're gonna have to go with a straight out of bounds play here to try and get a shot off. Pagnazzi appears like she's hurt. Yeah, I think she turned an ankle. Pellini, open, can't get it to go. Clem can't get there in time. And that will be the end of the first half with the Wildwood Lady Warriors holding a 22-14 lead, possibly 16 minutes away from the first girls basketball team in Big Four history to win a state title. Kyle we'll be back with a halftime chat as well as the second half after this timeout. Monmouth College, 22-14, Wildwood with the lead. Halftime of the Group 1 State Final. And here I believe we have a replay out of Teresa Polini and her outstanding play in the first half. Teresa with 12 first half points. You see a nice cross-court pass from Boyle here. Polini with the short 17-foot jumper straight through the hoop. Teresa Polini takes that shot from about 17 feet. You know, you would I think said, she would take I said short jumper to her. She makes it look so easy. You think she would take a step back and shoot from that three-point line to get the extra point, but she really has a good awareness of her right. range. Right. And she's really locked in on that 17-foot range. Yeah. As you mentioned, Polini with the 12 points, she led Wildwood scorers. Stacy Boyle had four. Kerry Clun had four. And and Lindsey McGraw with two on an offensive follow-up. So their so their total of 22 for. Preskill Cougars, Andrea Pagnazzi, seven, averages 20, she scored seven. Yasemin Sariar scored six, all from assist from, from Pagnazzi. And then Trisha Picnic with one, she hit a free throw for their total of 14. Okay, coming up you're gonna see the great cross court pass by once again Boyle to Pellini on a backdoor cut. There's Pellini, a good backdoor cut, and a beautiful shot over the head for another two of her 12 points. Yeah, that was a big, big point in the game because she was, uh, she was really caught there in a good trap, and she was on the verge of getting a five-second call against her. Hit Polini with that, so instead of Fresco having the ball, she hit Polini for two points, and that could have been a potential four-point turnaround. Stacy's playing a tremendous first half. Polini might have all the all the points, but definitely Stacy's playing a little better because she's throwing the ball a little bit better, and and she has a couple points herself. They had to roll a rack of balls off the court for them to get the second half underway. Fresco will have the ball. And here we go, Wildwood with 16 minutes to go to a state group one championship. They go right to Pagnazzi, guarded again by McLarnon, takes it right to the hoop. Can't get it to go, McLarnon boxing her out all the way out of bounds. And Pagnazzi and again gets the foul. A good hustle foul, but her third foul very early in the second half. So Pagnazzi, that has to hurt Cresco as we played nine seconds. Cresco lost possession of the ball. And Pagnazzi picks up her third foul. Pellini right to the basket, throws it up off the rim, comes back up with it, looks for rebound. Boyle. And there she goes from 18 and she's got it. No, it's two points. From here, it looked like she was behind the line. Stacy playing very confident today. As all the Wildwood Warriors are playing very confident tonight. And now they have that lead stretched back out again to 10 points, and they're clamping the defensive pressure on yet again. McLarnon out front with Pagnazzi. Hopped a little bit, and they got her for it. That's great defense by Lori. Lori's got about an inch or maybe two inches on Pagnazzi. Makes it kind of hard to see over. She thought she had a man break into the basket. There was no one there. It was too late, and she traveled and turned it over. We tend to give McLarnon a lot of credit for her defense, and well, we should, but good team defense for Wildwood causes turnovers like that. The pass that was once there wasn't there when she went to make it, and that caused the travel. McLarnon again draws the foul on number 25, Laura Adorado. A nice look by Pellini. So two quick team fouls for Cresskill. And McLaurin will go to the line for two free throws. McLaurin, a very good free throw shooter. 
Swalwood has yet to convert on any of their three free throws so far in the game. Except that one there. McLaurin erases that. As the lead's now up to 11, 25 to 14, Wildwood. McLaurin can't get that one. Loose ball. Creskill comes up with it. And Trisha Picknick's going to bring it up with Stacy Boyle guarding her. Goes all the way to the hoop. Aspenberg shuts her off, and Boyle's got her again. Laura Honorano from the corner can't get it. Klein boxing out brilliantly and picks up another foul, the third team foul already on Creskill. As you can see already, it's going to be important for Wildwood to shoot fouls well as Cresco's really piling them up here early. First half, Wildwood shot 75% in the first quarter, 31% in the second quarter for a first half total of 45%. Boyle finds Pelini again, deflected out. Klun comes up with it, back out to Boyle at the top of the key. Penetration off the backboard, can't get it to go. Only white jerseys there for the rebound as Picnic comes up with it. Picnic looked to break, saw Pelini back, waiting for it at the top of the key, decided to pull it out. Penetrates here, Klun ties her up, but they got her for reaching in on a holding foul. Wildwood's first team foul, third on Kerry Klein. And just as I say that, Lindsey McGraw up off the bench. Butch Fan are utilizing this bench very well this game. That's why you haven't seen any of Wildwood's players get tired. And it has taken a toll on, on Cresco, and you will see later on in the game. He keeps rotating, kind of like the Dean Smith of North Carolina keeps rotating on his bench and just wearing and tearing on on Pesco. Picnic converts. She's two of three from the foul line now. Well, you see their depth during the season, and you kind of take it for granted because they're way ahead in a lot of games, and he's running players in. You don't realize that those players are good enough to come in and help you in the tight games like we're seeing today. Picnic makes the second. And Cresco with a full court press man to man. Picnic on Boyle. Got Boyle for the travel. Coach Trianna looking for a timeout. I think he was a little bit upset with the call. It's a good one step by Boyle. Yeah, a lot of times you'll see that in high school and they pick up the ball and it's just do a little awkward dribble. The refs assume that you travel. Looks like she had the pivot foot down, but ref Boyle for the travel. It's 25-16, Wildwood in the lead. They lead it by nine with 6.09 left in the third quarter. And we'll be back for the remainder of that third quarter after this timeout. And we just handed a high-tech stat sheet for that first half. Ed, what's the tell stat sheet has everything. For the Cougars, first of all, they had seven turnovers, resulting for six of Wildwood's points. Lady Warriors turned the ball over six times, resulting in only two points. The Cougars only shot 17% from the floor, while Wildwood shot 75% from the floor in the first quarter. So Wildwood, again, doing the job with their defense, limiting that field goal percentage for Cresco way down. Pagnazzi looking to penetrate past McGraw. She gets past her this time. Can't get the layup to go. Aspenberg loses it. They got her for the foul, and Sarriera puts the follow up. Aspenberg with the foul. Sarriera having a brilliant game. She's got eight points and a chance to make it nine, and a chance to take a big chunk out of this Wildwood lead. Sarriere front rims it, and McLarnett comes up with a deflected rebound. Boyle comes up, and now Cresco playing a man-to-man. -man. Wildwood usually likes attacking a man-to-man -man -man defense. Gives that girl there a lot of freedom, and there she goes. Front rims it, can't get it to go. McLarnett to call it the foul. So McLarnett picks up her third foul. Again, on a rebound situation. McElwarn and McGraw in the game, so we'll see who takes Pagnazzi this trip. And McElwarn still has her. Boyle on Picnic as she holds out front. They go to Pagnazzi on the wing against McGraw, trying to get it to Picnic on the back door. She's got it. Nice pass to Sariar. Misses it. 
Picnic chooses to let it roll out of bounds. Amy couldn't hold on the ball there. She tried, kind of got away from her a little bit. She was kind of hoping to get the call going the other way and hoping the ref didn't see her. Hainsworth in, Aspenberg out for the Warriors. As Cresskill inbounds from the side. 23, Megan Quinn with Polini guarding her. Looking to penetrate. Polini right in front of her. McGraw on Honorado. Back to Quinn and into Picnic. And they got Boyle reaching in. Alan Boyle. So Creskill picked up a lot of early fouls. Wildwood has picked up four here in the last couple minutes of this third quarter. So should see a lot of free throws down the end of this game. They are very excited. They know they're only 16 minutes away from a, from a big win here. A little too aggressive early in the game. Picnic hits that one. Four out of five from the foul line for Trisha Picnic. So she's definitely proved that she can knock them down from, from the charity stripe. That's good. She cuts the second one. 25-20, Wawa's lead cut to five. Stacy Boyle handles against Picnic and the man-to-man -man full court pressure. Boyle double teamed out to Polini. Inside the McLarnin. Good recognition by Polini. Bruce Polini had the chance to take the three pointer. There was no one on her. Looked inside and found Lori McLaren all by herself there for a short turnaround jumper. Yeah, they can get three pointers anytime, but when you can go inside and get those five footers uncontested, you got to do it. McLaren capitalized. Wow, it spreads to a 1 3 1 defense. Cutting off those cross court passes, nearly stolen by Boyle. Picnic looks to penetrate. Polini comes over to contest. Sorry, yeah, Walk got away with it, throws it up and hits it. And she has 10. Lead back to five. Polini breaks the pressure. Here's the Boyle on the wing. Boyle penetrates, finds McLarnin. And they do draw the foul on number 25, Laura Adorado. That's her third, team's fourth. So the rest of this game, we're going to be shooting one and one on every foul situation. Getting back to the first half. Let me correct myself. Wildwood shot 45% from the floor, while Cresco only shot 20% from the floor. They missed all their foul shots. But look to improve here. McLarnin with two shots. McLaurin rolls it out. Yeah, if Wildwood shot 75% from the floor, they'd have a much bigger yeah. lead than eight points at the half. That was the first quarter. And most of that was Teresa Polini as she was on fire. McLaurin gets the roll. Number 52, Terry Clunnel check in to the game for Lori McLaurin. Clun back in with the three fouls. 4.06 to go in the third quarter. Wildwood leads by six, 28-22. While we're back into the 1-3-1 defense. Honorado on the wing, back to Picnic out front. Over to Quinn, looking to penetrate past Hainsworth, back to the top of the key. Shot up, no good. McGraw comes up with a loose ball. Deflected by Pagnazzi. Gets the Picnic stolen back by Polini, and let's see what she can do in the open court. Just gonna hold it out and run the offense. Good heads up by Wawood. McGraw with a pull-up jumper, and it's good. good. Lindsay McGraw showing she's not afraid to shoot. That's a move that has developed over the year. She probably wouldn't have made that shot early in the year. The last few games, she's been stepping up when her, when her man gambles, and she just goes up and hits that turnaround jumper, and it's been very successful good with it. blocked by Curry Klun in there. Curry, knowing she has a couple fouls on her, stood straight up. And wound up with a block. Preskill retains possession. Was Good deflected. defense by Crystal Robinson. Boyle looked to throw it ahead of the field, so it was Hainsworth, not Polini. Decided not to throw it, and Quinn picks up the foul. And I'm sorry. Stacy Boyle on the foul line. That was Hainsworth on the block. So Stacy Boyle will make her first trip to the foul line. Jackie Kallmeyer into the game for number 23, Megan Quinn, who looks very tired sitting over on the bench. Stacy Boyle will shoot one and one. Early foul trouble here put both teams into the bonus with only 3.04 left to play in the third quarter. 
Boyle's first shot is good. Boyle hits it. He said free throws will be very.